this is Sarp Storefront. Growing up in New York City, sisters Mabel and Chayira have been working since they were 14. After years of savings, they decided to go all in on their dreams and start Luna Magic. Their first 18 months were a whirlwind. They landed three major retail accounts and made it on Shark Tank. And what's crazy is that it actually wasn't until the Shark Tank promo aired that their employers found out about their side hustle. They hadn't yet quit their day jobs and their bosses had no idea what was going on behind the scenes. But once they found out, it was nothing but love and support. This isn't a mystery as to why it occurred, as the energy and passion they bring to their endeavors is apparent. By the end of the episode, you'll likely feel the same way. In today's episode, we chat with Shaida and Mabel about how Craigslist is a secret hack for all small businesses, how small businesses can have the upper hand when it comes to negotiations with major retailers, and what it takes to become a hero to the kids in their old neighborhood. All right, welcome to the podcast on today's show. We're talking to the lovely sisters of Luna Magic. Thanks for coming. For people who don't know your company, what do you do? What do you guys make? A pleasure to be here. We provide high quality cosmetics at great prices. Con mucho amor. I love that. Look at that. Rehearsed. <laughs> so good. What made you guys want to start this company? I mean, we saw a void in the marketplace for authentic cosmetic brand like you know it's not the typical i hired this celebrity this spanish celebrity to launch a brand it's like you know we are the customer let's see what You're the we can user. do yeah yeah and what was missing was it like the shades that were missing what was the thing or was the it just shades. like the founder the story yeah the shades the quality okay. for the price point you okay. know we believe in uh we're in mass retail so we believe in everyone yeah. having quality to great quality cosmetics at approachable prices and the founder story the creative the marketing the positioning I think we do an amazing job of bringing all that bilingual flair. The sabor. The beauty, el sabor. El sabor. El sabor. Yeah. La cultura. La cultura. I feel like, you know, exactly. people from our neighborhood, Washington Heights, they're like, oh my God, you guys made it. And we're like, yeah, and you can make it too. You can, yeah. You want to so, be that example for your neighborhood. Exactly. Absolutely. That's a real thing. That's a big thing. And so what was the first step in you guys wanting to do this? Like, were you guys always, I'm assuming, obviously, it's weird to ask a woman if she's into makeup. The answer is probably yes. But to like decide to then get into the science of it or like the manufacturing, what was your, like the first step you guys took to do that? I think it was like conversations between us. Um, at the moment, I was living in Boulder. and I just, In Colorado? Yeah, I was living oh, in wow. Boulder, Colorado. Was, or were you lost? No, <laughs> actually. <laughs> she chose to, herself. <laughs> no, actually coming out of New York City, it was beautiful. It was me finding it's really my, nice. Yeah, it was yeah. me finding myself, you know, living the typical housewife life. And she would come and she used, she used to talk to me about her life in corporate America and, you know, the void she saw in the retail side of like bringing in like small businesses, cultural businesses into retail, how hard it was. And she used to be, you know, advocating for those brands all the time. So I went to makeup school after my journalism career. And I was like, oh, my God, I like makeup. But I knew I didn't want to be a makeup artist. That was not my thing. I wanted like the business side of makeup and, you know, her frustration with my like, oh, let's do something. I think we started from there. What year was that? What year did you guys start this? 2018 was okay. the first time that, you know, because it was kind of like when in the retail market, like she was saying, I was seeing like brands like Fenty Beauty were coming out, like yeah. this unapologetic diversity, inclusivity stories. Yeah. And those became the first manifestation for what I was seeing on the trend side. Like finally somebody did it what's our version of that yeah. but a lot of it started like Saida said conversations and also inspiration meaning looking at the women in our family and the power that beauty and makeup plays in our community I mean Latina women and we say this and I say that with so much respect <laughs> yeah, somos say. vanidosas yeah. literally from birth we love to look, we <laughs> love to look good to smell good to feel good Dude, it's so our true. parents were in el salon like it was always like when I would come back from college, my family never, didn't even ask me about my grades. They were like, why is your hair like that? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to have a chance to like That's hit funny. up the salon? <laughs> I'm like, I just... There's a pride in that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, so growing up, we'd go to like Machu Picchu in Peru. And mm -hmm. then my mom would be there. And it's like a rainforest. And so it's like, <laughs> I mean, it's going to rain at some point every like hour or so. And so we're there and it's a bunch of Peruvians. And we're just like in a pack of them. We're all walking up. And all the women are like doing their makeup. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, you know, it's a which ritual. Which is hilarious to think yeah. about because it's going to start ends. raining in a second. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know why. I'll, I'll never forget that because yep. all the men were like, of course, like the peruanas, you know, it's like that's what they do. Yeah, yeah. They're prideful women. And so anytime you're going to take a photo, they're going to look or try to look proper. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And so, okay, so then you guys, what was the first thing you did? What was like the first product you guys made? We always thought about it as a collection. I always, I remember telling Saeed, a curation is everything. You, yeah. It's because the smaller you can curate and be intentional with every product, the better you can tell the story. Mm -hmm. So we started with five products okay. and we focus on color names. Salud, dinero y amor. Gostosa, Amor, Mamacita, Salsa, yeah, Reggaeton, like uh -huh. Salud, Dinero, yeah. like we were just really creative with putting like the culture in the product. Yeah. So we started with five products and that actually got us. What were the five? An eyeshadow palette. We call it the Uno collection. Uno, number one, first. Yeah. Kind of like Apple was like, you know, Apple one, two, three. We were like, <laughs> let's do it like in that fashion. <laughs> so the Uno collection, yeah. Uno. So we had an eyeshadow palette, two lashes and two lipsticks a red one and a pink one and it, they were both for they looked good on both my skin tone and Saida's skin tone okay. and then we went to town we launched the site and in four months we got our first yes from walmart our first retailer yeah because the thing with being curated is you can tell the story the retailers didn't feel overwhelmed by oh my god you guys have 200 SKUs. right they're like okay there's not a lot of risk in launching five things. Why don't we try with these five things? So I think that was the best strategy yeah. we came up yeah, with. Yeah, less is more. I mean, if you look at the retail space, everything is cluttered and, you know, I was on the other side of the table, so I was thinking like a merchant, right? Yeah, like Merchants, a retailer. Yeah. your job is to bring in, look at SKU productivity, cut things if they don't work out. So I come in with that training, I understood how to like position it to minimize the risk for them and us, yeah. but also focus on telling the story and the opportunity that our brand had for the for the long term game. Of, and what, what of markets scaling. did you guys start in? Like what was what was it where Walmart felt comfortable to say, okay, we're gonna start in these regions? That's funny you say that because we also came with data. We came with our own data to Hell say yeah, you did. hey, we regional were, strategy. Yeah, we yeah. were very intentional. We Correct. went down to zip codes. Zip codes. We're like, like these are we the want zip to codes. be in this zip code and this zip code because we know our people are there. And exactly. You were like, like, like where is Lauda being played on TV? Exactly. Right. Those are the zip codes. I downloaded <laughs> census data. Okay. Hear this. This is a nerd. Yeah. Census data and we clustered the data. Um, so we started in regional markets, obviously New York for Target, yeah. the second retailer, but New York, California, Texas, and Florida. Yeah. So we're Coastal. deeply. And Which then are there's great markets, massive. Massive also, markets. So it's but super then, helpful. Yeah, but then we learned with the retailers that there's random markets in the middle of America where there's 50% okay. Latino population. Like, like one what? store in a Walmart store in Wisconsin, and we were like, we didn't know that. So we start learning from them too about where these customers' clusters are located because they have access to that information. Yeah, the one thing I learned recently by doing this podcast is like if you're a brand and you can and you can partner with a retailer on a problem they're trying to solve, yes. it's the best way to do it. And I never 100%. considered that. And I think at least the way I was thinking about just as an interviewer, it's more of like, if you if you if you think mindset wise that you're the entrepreneur, there's a, there's a part of you that's gonna feel really small when, mm. when talking to like a Walmart or a Correct. Target. But if you can partner with them on like a strategy, Correct. all exactly. of a sudden it's like it's bigger and they respect you more and they're going to look out for you and probably like ensure success because yeah, of this that alignment. Is, that yes. is exactly what we learned. Obviously, the first year we were super scared. We were like, oh, my God, what do they want? But then we realized that these merchants have so many accounts. Yeah. So it's up to us to come to them with information. Hey, why don't we do this and why don't we do that? And they love that from us. They're like, oh, my God, thank you for telling me. Thank you for telling me. Yeah. And then we started building that relationship. And what yeah. was the pricing at the beginning? Like, how did you guys nail that down? <laughs> That's funny because at the beginning, to be honest, when we launched the site, we were thinking like 30, the price went between 25 and 40. Okay. But then we started studying the market and realizing, okay, where are our customers? Walmart, I found this re report that said, where Latina customers are shopping, and they ranked in one to 10. Walmart's at the top of the list, Target, CVS, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So then we, we looked at our pricing. Obviously, Walmart is, you know, everyday savings. So then we relooked at our pricings. But to be honest, when we relooked at our pricing, we understood that mass means volume in, in a different way versus sure. selling 38 to a specific segment of customers. Mm -hmm. It's about reaching as many people as possible. So, so you lowered it. Yeah, we yeah. lowered it. But it didn't matter because it's like, we, we weren't anywhere, nobody knew, but we did at the beginning, like we look at pricing to make sure it made sense. But, yeah. And for me personally, and we had this conversation multiple times, I am the high, low shopper. Like I can buy the highest of the high and then I'm like, oh my God, this is cute, this is $10, I go and I buy it. Mm -hmm. 
And I think in our culture, we think that way. We're like, okay, you know, we're driving this Mercedes Benz, but we're living <laughs> at home with mom. Yeah. You know, we, we like to dabble into the highs and the lows. Yeah. So I just went to my sister and I'm like, you know, we all know we want this to be $32. But I'm thinking as, as a buyer, as this girl who's in college, who's, you know, getting minimum wage, what is she willing to pay for this product? Okay. Yeah. So and then that's how we started, you know, we're like, okay, let's let's be realistic to to reach the mass. Yeah, yeah that and like we, we say something that we said in our Shark Tank pitch, bueno, bonito, barato. Like yeah. when our parents used to take My a shopping. My grandma used to say that all the time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It had to satisfy those three things. Yeah. It had to be bueno, like good quality, bonito. It had to look beautiful and barato. It had to be, I hate using the word inexpensive. cheap. Inexpensive. 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 Yeah. Just, just right. Affordable. Just, yeah. Affordable. The price, yeah. It has, has to, to make right. sense. An because affordable luxury. Affordable luxury. Yeah. And the yeah. beauty of that, of having that Latino cultural insight, yeah, is that we know that we have a large propensity to be loyal shoppers. Once we find a brand that we like, yeah. like, for example, Arroz Canilla, like, there's certain things that, yeah. like, I grew up in that I know I should buy probably, like, a ni the, the more nicer version of it sure. but because that rice has so much significance to my family yeah. food culture it's, a loyalty there. it's highly unlikely that i'll ever trade up like yeah. you know what i mean but I and, that. but that's the latino customer that yeah. once we find something we love we're deeply loyal and so when you rolled out how did it go like were you right about your assumptions or who did you find out your buyer was how old were they so Ooh. our the good news is so we got everyone is always asking introduced and we our buyer just understood it and it happened because what to what you were saying earlier they knew that they had a void with this customer base so by the time we came with our nielsen data and our regional strategy and our marketing and our packaging it was they were waiting for that they've been wanting that so that's why it almost always feels like a marriage yeah. It was synergies. Yeah. And, right? you know, other Latina brands did go to these retailers, but they couldn't maintain inside the retailer. And mm -hmm. that's the biggest yeah. thing, maintaining. It's not getting in. Getting in, it's great. It's staying it's in. It's just staying in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because they had the higher price point, they couldn't stay in retail. It didn't right. get sticky. And how, yeah. how are you guys going about marketing this? Was it Instagram? Social media. Social media. Social okay. media. And I think our first big push was Shark Tank. Shark like, Tank people don't yeah. realize that... When we did Shark Tank, I still had a full-time job, okay, that I went back to and we're like, oh my God, I think everyone's gonna know that I'm doing this little magic thing <laughs> on the side. But it was social media, um, press relationships. I brought in a lot of like my industry contacts into the, awesome. and low key, I was, slowly building those internal relationships without telling them that I was working on Luna Magic sure. in a nice way. I was yeah. like, what do you think about this idea? What do you think about that idea? Yeah. But everyone was all excited and ready to push us. Everyone, but well, I think why we were so lucky is that everyone believed it wasn't hard to sell. Right, they got it. As soon as you explain it, they so, got it. Yeah, like even yeah. when you think about like the consultants, everybody just, there was Understood something. Understood which They way. were like, finally, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I don't want to say that the process was easy because it's it was totally. not. Never I don't want to say that. But yeah. I think there was a synergy mm -hmm. where, you know, how we were selling it. There was a synergy going on of the atmosphere. You know, this was pre-BLM. It was organic. So at what point? During your journey, do you, does Shark Tank reach out to you or do you guys? We reached out to Shark Tank. So okay. it's funny. A Sunday, I was like, you know what? Let me put in an application, how to get into Shark Tank. And then I found the application on ABC.com. Then I call my sister, I swear to God, and then I fill it out. And I was like, this is a lot of questions, but whatever. Enter, who cares? Then I then someone emails us in 48 hours. And I said, Shara, you're not going to believe this. They got back to us. She's like, what? I was like, I swear to God, I'm not making this up. And then the rest is history. Yeah. And what I love about that story is I think people think that entrepreneurship is just like, it is difficult, but it's just like this hard thing. But a lot of the internet, there's access to all these things. There's LinkedIn, there's ABC.com. It's all available. You just yeah. got to shoot your shot. And It's funny. When we when we had uh, Matt Higgins on, who was a, a, shark, a guest shark, mm -hmm. he, he was like, you guys should focus on Shark Tank on the podcast for a little while and see mm -hmm. how it goes. And I was like, all right, cool, we'll do that. And then I went to chat GPT and I just input like, LA, so so top Shark Tank companies based in LA, and mm -hmm. it gave us like a list of wow. twenty, and then we just reached out to the twenty on like Instagram. Yep, there you go. And it wow. like just, but it was an interesting thing to think about of using GPT that way. Love that. Which is like a total hack, but it worked out. So before you guys go on to Shark Tank, what is going? Are you like stocking up? Are you going crazy? No. What is what is happening? Yes pitch, and pitch, no. Pitch, pitch, practice. Yes and no. We okay. what a lot of people don't realize is that Shark Tank we went to sell the dream. We didn't have a warehouse. Ooh. Yeah. We did. 
We didn't nothing. have a lot of things. That's how we it were, goes, by the way. <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> we were like, I, because I had worked in startups You had before. a dream and you had your mindset. Yes. That's it. That's all you need. One thing that I learned in startups is MVP. Prove the concept in a small way before you invest all this energy, time, and effort creating something that nobody actually wants, yeah. right? Smart. So we were like, okay, two of us, we look cute. We could sell this thing. Let's focus on our pitch. Let's focus on our visual identity. Let's focus on understanding the questions that they, we think they're going to ask us. Let's focus on getting a full set of samples of products that we intend to create should we get you know, all these things. And then let's go with these Walmart POs and let's see what happens. So when this, it, it's just so funny to us, because now that I look at it, I'm like, how dare we think? We were standing Me, there with no warehouse. <laughs> exactly, everything everything was in my That's garage. That's the best, though. Yeah. Everything was in my we're garage. Like, and we're now like, that I think about it, I'm like, what the hell were we thinking? We were so, <laughs> I, I say this in the nicest, graceful way, it. we were so naive. That's <laughs> the best, though. <laughs> exactly, we were so naive. Yeah. We're That's like, honestly okay. the best. But you know, the good news is, when we did the experience, which that's a whole nother conversation about the, out of body experience that, that oh, we I both shared it. from that. I believe it. Is they asked us these questions, but again, we got information. They were like, you need a warehouse or not. Then the next mm -hmm. week, we were like, Craigslist, warehouse manager. Yeah. Oh, we gotta go find it. You know, yeah. it actually gave us information to know how to take the next step. Because you li you listen to the questions. Exactly. Yeah, we went smart. there to learn. You we went lot. there to learn. They're like, you need a warehouse. Lori said, put, put your faces on the packaging. Lori said, put the, mm -hmm. your faces on the packaging. Barbara yeah. said, it's you guys. It's you guys selling the you vision. You could sell socks for all I care. And we were yeah. like, wait, what? People believe in you. And it gave us confidence to know that like the founder story is what's probably going to drive this brand. Did you know Alex Rodriguez would be there? No, 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 no. He okay. was a guest shark. They didn't tell us. What was that like? <laughs> it was <laughs> interesting. I, I was not surprised. Yeah, we were I'm like, like mm, okay. but we shout out to Alex. He helped. I feel we like somebody him. like him helped us. People know who he is from baseball, right? Everybody knows Alex. But that man's a businessman. Yeah, but he's a businessman, right? That man's right? a real businessman. Like he's he's like a mainstream Dominican. Yeah. Like everybody. So I think it helped create that cultural connection. Totally. Yes, he yeah, helped. He us. understood. He literally helped tell the cultural, you know, meaning of what it is to be Dominican. You know, yeah, he was like, oh, he helped us with the sharks. You know, yeah. he, he and he, we we had a Spanish moment, which I think it was cool oh, to cool. show on national television, like yeah. us straddling between speaking to these. American business sharks and then this Dominican American yeah. businessman. And Mr. Wonderful, he kind of went into you. He kind of went in, but I think he had he a good such day. He's a teddy bear? He, he, had, he had a good day that day. He yeah. had a he good day. He was actually, yes, he was tough, but he was actually really kind. I think everything he said was true. Yeah, that's true. But again, we don't listen. He's like, oh, you're going to get the way he's, his swallowed delivery, in maybe. The, the, what did he say? The ocean is going to, the, it's like the you, boat. You yeah, both went he, out <laughs> fishing. You went out fishing and you um, caught a whale. Caught a whale and you're just trying to realize the whale is going to eat you alive. And then we were like, Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's just keep going. <laughs> oh, man. That's pretty funny. Did you guys go in there wanting a specific shark? We kind of knew who made sense. Okay. Yes. And who did. We, we were open. Sense. We were open. And probably Lori. Yeah, we thought Lori. Lori we thought Lori would, would come them, in. But QVC I, and her, her setup yeah. like that, right? Yeah, we thought we would. she would come in. But to be honest, like Barbara made the most sense. It was like a New York... City Synergy. energy. That's right. Yeah, she's that's right. And, um, and we, she likes investing in pairs. She told us she likes twos. Yeah. Oh, um, like, she two, also, like two co-founders? Yes. Like, if you look at her history, she's always investing in co-founders, siblings or cousins the or lobster family. Boys. The lobster like, boys. It's always, she loves those yeah. guys. Yeah. It's and then, twos. yeah. And then we found out that her makeup artist was Dominican. So oh, she wow. had like so then she kind of understood so the there was an inside she had track. access. Yeah. That's actually really good information. And then you guys made the deal on the on TV. On Correct. TV. Did it then work out after? No, we chose not to close. Okay. Um, we both mutually decided that what we needed out of from uh, the for the business, yeah. uh, it wasn't there wasn't the synergies, but it was very amicable. Yeah, she wanted thirty so percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of massive. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But she's a shark, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, or a killer. She gave, us great great advice. she gave us great advice around. And if anything, we walked away very inspired because she believed in us. She was like, regardless of what happens, like just you guys are like, you guys are magical. Like she gave us yeah. the best advice. We were like, OK, where do we start? And she said, why don't you start on Craigslist? And I'm like, huh? Finding employees on Craigslist? That's it's a thing. Yeah. And she said, yes. 
We didn't know how scrappy she actually was. That's a pro tip was. for anyone Correct. listening. Exactly. Go to Craigslist. I would have never thought of that either. Our number one employee who's been with us for two years and our most loyal, it came from Craigslist. Jose, Craigslist. shout out to Jose. Nice. Craig, and they, Craigslist. Exactly. Yeah. Craigslist. <laughs> Craigslist. No, it's go. true. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. And so then what happens when you guys go off? The, so, so the show airs. I imagine, I can only imagine what happens on the sales side. That goes crazy. Yes. yes. Spike in traffic. Well, first of all, the promo went up and somebody at my job saw me. Is that mm. you? And I'm like, who, where? And I was like, oh, I think I need to quit. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is- You were exposed. I was like, ah! But oh my God. on the sales side, you know- Did you quit? Did you quit? Did you, did you? No, I did. So I, I had a conversation with my boss and I said, hey, um, I think I need to work on out Shark some Tank. kind of flexible agreement here. Okay. And she goes, um, Just take so what, your it's your time. side project? I was like, yeah, it's kind of like taking off, but I'm not really sure. And then she goes, okay, so what's what what's the deal? And I said, well, you know, we're going to be on Shark Tank. She's like, what? And then I go, yeah, and we're rolling out at Walmart, 1,500 stores. She goes, girl, you don't have time to be here. You need to go run that business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on the premiere night when the episode aired, my team from my former company, we did a viewing party. And it was everybody was just excited for excited, us. Yeah. And that's yeah. a beautiful thing to be able to transition with, peace and optimism instead yeah. of like you know quitting and everybody thinks somebody's dying yeah that's hard to do way to negotiate that that's tough yeah and, and at least she was supportive it could have went the other way no she was she was no nice. we actually learned how people thought we were brave yes by being entrepreneurs and on um, shark tank like that night phone calls from former bosses interns exes like people <laughs> <laughs> Woodwork oh season. LinkedIn, phone, yeah. email. People it was from, crazy. People from like <laughs> high school, people from like mentor you. It was like, oh my God. It's crazy. It yeah, is but, crazy. Yeah. But it was a shared win. Everybody was like, wow, like we were not surprised, but also we're so happy for you guys. Yeah. And that was nice. Did you guys raise capital after that? Or did no, you need no, to no, raise we're capital? We're so family funded. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so the sales are enough where you guys are in good shape. Yeah. yeah, we're yeah. very profitable. We were very, That's great. you know, we launched now in hindsight, three retailers in 18 months, Oof. Walmart, then we fast followed with Target and then CVS. It was very aggressive. Growth. That's a lot you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But that's, you know, we've been, a pro we we're actually running a profitable business. So that's, that's nice to build a business. Usually startups don't make any money for a really long time. Yeah. Especially, well, I guess maybe in the makeup game, things can be a little bit more high it margin. It can get, yes. Which is kind of nice. Yes. Well, that's yeah. why we like to call ourselves Mastige. What's that mean? Mastige. <laughs> it's that we're targeting the masses. But it's like at a price that it's more elevated. So the we're quality like, of the product. The quality of the products. Our our products quality is like a thirty dollar quality yeah. for like eight bucks. Beauty lovers are into quality. They know when they're getting a deal. Exactly. Like we stand for value. So for for example, our lash packs, that's one of our highest repeat. Uh, purchase because a you need them all the time but like they know like wow we can't believe that we're getting this quality product at this price yeah how many stores are you guys at now 2500 okay Which same retailers same no three, all or? across all three retailers are you targeting anyone else is there like, oh yeah they are targeting who's on us your list? We've, yeah. we've had to to be honest <laughs> we've had to because it's yeah. been 18 months of like you know of these three retailers, we've had to and pause. COVID. Yeah. And COVID. And COVID. Yeah. Growing, yeah. Growing we've a had team. to pause other retailers because we're like, oh my God. You're catching up. We're yes. catching up. Yeah. This is the year of catching up. Yes. Yeah. Because also smart. we have to build a team, build a culture. Yeah. We also had to move. We outgrew our first warehouse in nine months and we had to move the warehouse. Yeah. So it's like the growth has been like, it's not just like the retailer side. It's it takes us, so yeah. much work to even do business with these retailers. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't realize is that we're an indie brand. But the process is still made for the big boys. Sure. So we have yeah. we're jumping. We're we're like growing into like operating like it's a the big, big commercial boys. Yeah, yeah operation. When you think about the future for your business, what does it look like in terms of like? Do you guys want to sell this eventually? Do you want to expand into other things? Maybe I fashion. For, like what? Yeah. What? Are, so what's the curiosity? For us is to be really open, and I say that because the natural trajectory of beauty is acquisition. But I think that the Luna Magic brand is starting to be a lifestyle a brand. Lifestyle brand. Yeah. So it could yeah. be different categories. It could be interesting experiential opportunities. Like we're actually in that space of like saying like we did an exercise of like if money wasn't an issue and we could partner with any brand in the world. Dream collab. Across beauty, 
fashion, food. You know, we let's do it. Let's do it. Exactly. And that's where we're at. Who exactly. is it? Tell me and who it is. Who, who, started, who's like the dream collab? So for other beauties, it could be us to ha- having a narrative story with a legacy brand. I think that could be interesting, like old beauty and new beauty, and how do we could tell a cool updated story. I think Nike could be interesting if we yeah. look at perform beauty through the lens of performance. Like for example, like now athletes are wearing lashes on the court. Right. Like it's female athletes are yeah. look the intersection yeah, of like yeah, athleticism right. and sexiness. Yeah. I think Nike could help us tell hey Nike execs yeah. <laughs> could help us tell that story. Obviously, your fashion brands could be. Could we be the official beauty sponsor of Oscar de la Renta? Yeah. New York Fashion Week. Like, why not stretch ourselves to anything? But what yeah. about what do you think? Other verticals: um, hair care, fashion, clothing. We just so we'll many see. things. We'll see. Sky's the limit. Yeah, that I think that's so fun. I think about also sometimes these brands that like when they're so mission driven, like you guys, where you're trying to like do it for your community or be the example entrepreneur to people like you or that look like you even it's like you, you can become a movement yeah you know? and, the, and then that takes on a different life you start thinking different mm-hmm. right so if to, it's not a business anymore it's, it's you're not. past it now and now that's, it's that's about where we the are movement. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what we learned after shark tank all these emails about oh my god you inspire us you inspire us mm-hmm. we're like okay this became you know a hobby this was a hobby this was fun and now we're like okay we have this community that is looking up at us to like inspire them so we have a like a huge responsibility to like to keep going mm. and giving them the resources and that's why we started mentor magic because instead of us like answering one email at a time we're like no let's just do this properly let's do this annually where we you know open it up for our community answer any questions that they have give them the resources yeah. because you know there's a lot of companies that say follow your dreams but what and does that mean? Like, okay, what does that mean? <laughs> what what comes after follow your dreams? No. What this, are the steps? Exactly. What are the steps that you need to take in order to get yeah. there? Okay. That's where we are. Yeah. So and you guys help them with that. Yeah. Mentor yeah. Magic. Like through okay. Mentor Magic, we provide like community events where we kind of host a Shark Tank style or like we, we're intimate. Tell us what your problems are. We'll give it to you 100% real. We'll yeah. tell you like the behind the scenes of what retailers won't tell you. Like I keep it real with all my entrepreneurs, but we keep it in a very safe space. So it, it's not gossip. It's more yeah. like there aren't that many people like us that even had this chance. Yeah. And if you look at the new brand entry rate, let's say at Walmart, they only allow 2% of new brands every year. Oh, wow. So how do we level the playing field yeah. to our community now that we've made it, sharing with them, think about it this way, right? Having that information that can help change somebody's life. And is there a success story in there yet? Or is it, you got yes, a couple so brewing? I have two success stories, okay, I love think. It. I advise a brand called Okoa Beauty. They're two Dominican sisters in the hair care space, and they're ramping up to launch in their first retailer soon. And then Bonita Fierce Candle, a woman that came to our Mentor Magic event in New York City, and she's being presented with some interesting opportunities for next year from a major retailer. So it's just, it's to, to us, it's like, to me, that's how you know you're moving the needle. Like, as we learn something, don't make the same mistakes or don't, you know what I mean? And in the same way that we've actually benefited from mentorship ourselves, like we have people telling us, don't go, you know? And thankfully our company has resources that we are surrounded by amazing quality experts. That's why people don't realize in the background we're being guided. So how can we pay that forward to people who are a little bit early on? And you're listening. Yeah, Which is we're the listening. Whole I think that's the thing. Like, exactly. so many people don't listen to good advice. And no. understanding that there's a piece of the pie for, for everyone. everybody. Yeah. Like, I feel like sometimes we have this mentality. It's like, okay, if you guys have it, I don't want to share, you know, the resources. I don't want to share my secrets. Yeah. Like, no, let's just be open and let's all make it together. Yeah. And what I tell my sister is like a selfish thing. I said, you know, you always hear these stories of people who made it, but they are lonely at the top. I want to drink. I want to like drink nice champagne with a bunch of us, so I don't feel alone when we exit or whatever the mm-hmm. end goal of this. You know, like mm-hmm. to have a community of people who I call like we started from the bottom, now we're here, yeah. and like-minded and also mission-driven forward that want to pay it back. I think that that ecosystem to me is what gets me up every day. 
that's actually one of the reasons on, on all our real estate deals we'll have investors because it's like if it hits everybody wins correct yeah. and then everybody you don't, you don't eat win. alone and then you're not the guy paying for everyone <laughs> right? right you you hear those stories like there's one person happens. and then everyone doesn't know how to add value but if you train and you give people tools and you hold them accountable little by little everybody can feel that they're part of that win have you given the startup bug to anybody in your family my brother keeps telling me now. Now he's who I was to her like five years ago. Okay. My brother's like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You know, I think everybody's startup idea will has to be unique to them. Yeah, right? totally like, true. It, it's, a, it's such a personal thing that yeah. old me would be like, I think you, need, you could be the next Bill Gates. Da, da, da. Now I'm learning to listen to oh, wow. what they're telling me. All the therapy's working. This is yeah. so yeah. good. Yeah, I have a therapist, a coach. <laughs> oh, yeah. right? Now I listen to what they want, and I make sure that I ask questions around making sure that it's their dream and yeah. not mine. I think entrepreneurship is so, it's so personal. It and, is personal. It's, it it's almost like a mirror. It's it usually is a mirror. a mirror. And so what the world sees is it sort is of the, how you see yourself. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. And and I think at the beginning, it's like we try to like guide people. You can do better. You can you do, can do better. Yeah. And then we learn, no, if they're okay going to this level, yeah. happy content. At their pace. At their pace. Let's yeah. just guide them to that level. And yeah. it's okay. They're happy. We're happy. And let's go. Everybody's it. happy. Yeah. That, that took me a long time to figure out. I know. Yeah. You get frustrated, you gotta, right? Like, you yeah. can do more. You can do, No, you got to let people. And you know, and they get there on their own. They get inspired. Like I met, I spoke to somebody yesterday who said the words, I could tell that he was in a runt and then he like figured it out. And then we reconnected and he said, and I said, how are you doing? It seems like you have all these wins. He goes, I'm inspired. Oh, wow. So that's how I know when somebody's like on the path, when you could figure out how to create things that make you feel good and inspired. Cause yeah. if you're coming from a place of inspiration. It's right? easy. Yeah. No, it's that's easy. it. So what's next for you guys? I know you're a bigger warehouse. You mentioned that. World domination. World domination <laughs> number two. Just growing the team. Oh I God. feel like. How big like is the team now? How many people do you guys have? 16. Okay. What I call my hustlers. I mean, everybody in so there. So if you're listening and you're looking for a job. Lunamagic.com. Yes. Luna Luna we're, we're actually hiring. We're looking for people. <laughs> what kind of roles are you hiring? Um, operations, mostly supply chain. Okay. Um, account management and marketing. Okay. So any marketing guru, social media, but you must love Instagram. Like it's your life. Yeah. It has Instagram, to be a TikTok. bloodline. <laughs> you gotta be a pro. Yeah, you gotta exactly. be a pro. Yeah. We don't care about the age. We care about the passion. All right, yeah. so you're hiring, new warehouse, what else? Dreaming big, now we're like looking at the vision. We're looking at like financial forecasting and how big we think this can be. Talking to uh, different types of companies around, I'm gonna shoot my shot right now in case somebody's watching. Yeah. I have this, vision or we have this vision of putting a luna magic lip balm in a first class flight i don't know if it's delta jet blue oh, yeah, one of those that. airlines so do thinking that. like and we spoke to somebody and they're like that's possible we did something that da, 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 da. it's totally possible exactly so those are yeah. the kind of ideas that we're kind of getting excited by like where's our customer what is she doing or they're doing outside of coming into retail where are they shopping is it forever 21 are they on a plane are they at coachella would you ever do your own retail like your no. own location oh or pop God. up even? No. She wanted that at the I beginning. Want, you know what I well, you know what I think is possible? A beauty salon experience. Oh, that's fun. Right? Like where there aren't that many like dry bar is okay. a end to end experience. Yeah. But what it imagine a dry bar with a culture. So this as you were talking about this earlier, I don't know why I thought this, <laughs> but I was like I thought that, but then I thought about it at a sports stadium. Ooh. Because women, if you think about it, it's true they're bored. They're kind of like hmm. Mm. Not all women, but some women, right? And it's mostly like a dude's thing. And yeah. so in this scenario, you almost change it up a little bit. I also thought about it like a sales pitch. Like you can convince somebody to try this pretty simply. Like, You know what? It's so funny why you say that. Because we went to Complex Con, which is a mostly boy thing. And all the women that followed their boyfriends to support them. Yeah. But it was interesting that the guys came to the makeup section. Oh, to my buy. girlfriend would like this. My girlfriend would like that this. I'm cool. buying this for my girlfriend. Wow. So that sparked my interest to your point. Like men are actually also looking for cool things to give their girls. Yeah. 
So the sports. Maybe a pop up. I don't know. I don't That's know why I thought about it, but I was like, this would be dope. That I think the cool. Yankee Stadium. Would... That would be dope. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Yankee Stadium. Right for the top. Hi. Right Alex, for the top. this Alex. is where you would come in. You had that <laughs> conflict he... of interest then, but y'all yeah. not together no more. So he can't <laughs> <last>. <laughs> We're so shady. <laughs> What else should we know? Where can people find you? Where can people shop? Find us on lunamagic.com. We have a store locator page. We are distributed in CVS, Walmart, and Target. Uh, hit us in the DMs. Mabel.FriasXO. Saida is... Saida.Frias. And Luna Magic Beauty. Um, we want to hear from our community, from anyone, any spo- anybody that's inspired by this podcast and maybe thinks something that we didn't think about we're always open to hearing new ideas and our next mentor magic we're giving out a ten thousand dollar check oh wow that's Woo! huge yes yeah that's amazing for you so, yes guys. for your for your business. business we're having an event in september partnered with a, a hair care company that we'll announce later but that to us is how we want to grow with our business and our community. The first step was providing advisory services and being real and intimate spaces. And next step is capital. Yeah. A check to match Makes perfect sense. the advice. And then and then and the then question is it. to those who are watching, how do we turn a ten thousand dollar check to a fifty thousand dollar check sure. to a right? Yeah. And how do we put more people of color in in, in more favorable entrepreneurial spaces? I, I love think it. that's gonna be cool. Thanks for coming on the podcast, guys. That's of great. course we had a blast. Un gusto. Thank you. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for the support and making it to the end of the episode. If you haven't already, please do a review and share the episode with your friends. If you never want to miss a beat on all things entrepreneurship, make sure to follow us on socials for daily content. See you next Tuesday for another great episode.